and welcome back to another Blu-ray review. I've been waiting to do this one for a long time. This is um, a film and the beginning of a series of films I've been really eager to check out since they were announced by Eureka last year. You go back to my, my first Eureka announcement videos where I'm kind of covering the new releases coming out and I was very intrigued by the Michelle Yeoh Hong Kong action movies that they were going to be releasing from the 80s because it was something that I'd never seen before from her. And was only really familiar with her from stuff like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and more recent movies, stuff like Shang Chi and Everything Everywhere All at Once. She just got uh, nominated for an Oscar for that film, so it feels like a fitting time to dive into her back catalogue and to literally go back to her first starring role in a film, uh, which is this movie, Yes, Madam. So I was really excited about this one. I'd watched the trailer, thought the fight scenes looked great. She looked awesome, and yeah, it was just a part of her career. I was was completely unaware of. I didn't even know that she was Malaysian. So already this release has taught me a lot about Michelle and her history and background. She started off as a, as a dancer and was injured and was unable to continue doing that, but she was very um, into physical stuff, sports, and, and that's why she was very adept at kind of uh, learning the Hong Kong fighting style for movies. And so she, I think she appeared in a commercial first with Jackie Chan and very quickly they kind of realized they might have a star in their hands and this was her first kind of leading role, uh, maybe even her first proper movie, I would guess, as an actor. And I was excited to check this one out and it did not disappoint. So we're going to talk about the film, talk about the Blu-ray as, as we normally do. Um, but honestly, like this is just, I, I love this film now, but I love this release I love how it's taught me so much about Hong Kong cinema um, in, in a very short span of time. And it's mainly the two audio commentaries, which, you know, I've, I've been on record before in the past saying that I'm iffy on kind of critic commentaries, but I've, I've been quite enjoying them a lot in the past few Eureka releases that I've got and, and listened to and taken the time to listen to. Um, but this really added so much context for the film, for other people in the Hong Kong cinema world in the 1980s. Um, you know, someone like Dick Wei, who you can see in the top here, who's one of the kind of henchman characters in the film. I recognize him. I didn't know his name was Dick Wei. Now I know. And yes, yeah, so I've learned a lot. And I'm actually, I'll, I'll just get this one right out of the way. I would like to thank, I can't remember who it was now, but I'll just thank all four of them. The, there's two audio commentaries for this film. Uh, one is with Frank Jang and Michael Worth. The other is with Mike Leader and Anna Venema. I'd just like to thank all four of those guys, whichever one of you it was, who kind of just said the name Ewan Bew. Because I wanted to know how to pronounce Ewan Bew's name for like five years now, ever since I saw um, uh, Wheels on Meals, Meals on Wheels, I should say. And it's like, is it Ewan Bao? Is it Ewan Biao? And I, I now know it's it's pretty much, at least, this is a much more accurate um, pronunciation. It's Ewan Bu. So that was just like, oh, thank you. I was, so, <laughs> I was so unreasonably happy to finally know how to pronounce his name because he's awesome. And I thought for a split second he was in this film because there's a guy running around who looks a lot like him. And the comparison is not, I'm not the first person to think this, they're both aware of this. But there's an actor in this film called Mang Hoi, who um, is one of the main characters of the film. He looks very much like Yuen Bu. Anyway, let's get into the film itself. Yes, madam. So this is a film about, and it, it's tricky because, you know, this is cited as the film that kicked off the girls with guns genre. And you got Michelle Yeoh and uh, a, an American actress, Cynthia Rothrock. Who, who came into to Hong Kong to start making films around the same time as Michelle. And they're kind of the two badass police women in the film, the two kind of senior inspector police women who kind of kick ass, take names and kind of, you know, take, take down these, these criminals. Um, and, you know, the Blu-ray very much sells that, you know, they're all over the cover and it's, it's you know, very much you know, Michelle Yo. That's what they're kind of selling everything on. But um, <laughs> it really isn't their film. There's these three characters, these kind of, um, what do you call it? They're crooks, really. They're kind of these underhanded kind of, there's the, one of them works in forgery and making fake passports and stuff. And they're these kind of slimy little guys, but you, you, they're kind of lovable at the same time. And they're really the main characters of the film. And they're all named after drugs. Um, like, you're not like, you know, cocaine and, you know, 
cannabis, but like um, Strepsil, I think is one of their names, Aspirin, Panadol. And these three guys are really, they get kind of the lion's share of the, I don't know if you can call it character development or screen time, but certainly they get the, more, the most focus compared to Michelle and Cynthia, who shine like no other when they're on screen. Don't get me wrong. And I'm so glad I also finally now have seen the scene from that, to me, iconic gif of them kind of doing that little kind of, uh, what do you call it, little hand slap, kind of high five, kind of like, let's go pose, which is such an awesome gif. And I've wanted to know what the film was for so long. Now I've seen it and I know the context of it. And it really is a great kind of rah-rah moment before the big final fight, which I can't wait to talk about. But, you know, they don't really have much character development, really. There's, you know, Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, she's awesome. And the opening scene of the film sets her up as a total badass. And there's even a kind of direct homage to Dirty Harry, though. She's, in this version, she's got a shotgun. And she's awesome. Like, she, she has so much charisma and screen presence as a kind of physical force. You, you can tell. You can see why she went on to become such a big star. And it, it transcends language. Like, she just, I mean, she's beautiful, but she's tough. And you can tell she's doing a lot of this, the fight scenes herself, which is, you know, that always helps. And the Hong Kong kind of action films, they tend to really showcase that. They'll show the real actor doing a lot of it. Of course, there's stunt people involved, and, and they're almost as much, for me, stars of the show as the actual actors playing the parts, because I always respect and Coming from a wrestling background, I see someone take a, a flip and they land on the back of their head. I know what that kind of feels like. Yes! yes! Oh! Yes! Oh! But seeing them go so full tilt with it, I know that it probably hurts even more than it hurt me when I was doing it. So I have tremendous respect for stunt people and I always react to the stunts. And it's such a, it's, it's a joy for me, even though it's, you're kind of wincing at the same time. There are these certain falls and bumps in the film that human bodies are not meant to take. And I just go like, oh, wow, fair play. You know? um, but I was surprised by how much Michelle was actually doing in the film. Cynthia Rothrock comes from a, like a pure martial artist background. And she, again, kicked ass in the film. But they don't have much to them. They kind of clash a little bit when she comes in. She's a British character in the movie called Carrie. And she comes in and... They, they clash a little bit. They have different styles of doing things, but it's, you know, it, it doesn't really go anywhere. And really we focus more on the antics of these three, um, you know, uh, kind of over the counter drug centric named characters um, played by Mang Hoi, who plays Aspirin. Um, John Sham plays Strepsil and then process of elimination because I know that Choi Hark plays uh, Panadol. Now, Choi Hark, I mean, I know Choi Hark as in, like, I've heard the name, I've seen some of his films, and, you know, like, um, Zoo Warriors from the Magic Mountain, and Once Upon a Time in China. Love those films, you know, visually, and I think whoever, you know, whoever made that those films was is a great director, and I learned that this is this guy called Choi Hark. And at the beginning of the credits, so yes, madam, it says special appearance by Choi Hark. I was like, oh, interesting. I wondered, you know, who he'll be playing as an actor. That's, you know, and I little did I know, really, and now I know a little bit more about this stuff, that a lot of these directors in this era of Hong Kong cinema were also acting in films as well. In some cases, because they are performers or, or were performers before they started directing, or it's like a kind of tit-for-tat thing where it's like, well, you know, you did some, some directing work or you did some of the action choreography on this film and now you come over on my film and you, you, you play a part. And as far as I'm aware, Choi Hart kind of came in to do a little bit part in this film and it just kind of expanded and he didn't realize how much he was letting himself in for. But he, he kind of is, he's not the main character, but he's certainly like uh, the highlight for me in terms of like a character in the movie. And I didn't know who he was until after I'd finished the film. Now there's a sequence where we see this the group of older men in kind of a, a hospital or an asylum, I'm not quite sure. And one of those old men is Sammo Hung, who I think produced this film. And it was one, it was his um, production company, in fact. But, um, you know, they very unconvincingly just sprayed their hair gray. They don't look, <laughs> look like old men at all. So there's Sammo. And I thought, okay, so maybe one of the other two guys is, was Choi Huck. But no, it's, it's Panadol, this like ridiculously like expressive and kind of manic character who's like really cartoony and full of life. And he's bouncing around the screen. And I just thought he was so memorable. 
and I, and I love this this guy. I'm like, Ooh, I've never seen this guy before, and it's fucking Choi Hark, you know. And I just thought that was so great, and so he kind of stole the show for me in terms of again character. Um, but you know, it's it's undeniable that the fight sequences once you get into those because he doesn't really do any fight scenes. He does a couple of little things here and there, some kind of physical stuff, which is still pretty impressive, but. You know, the the story itself, I don't really need to get into too much. But suffice it to say that there there's some bad guys. There's some kind of, you know, mustache twirling bad guys. The, the main bad guy is just this. He's just laughing all the time, just doing this big old belly laugh. <laughs> and then there's another guy with this ridiculous fake mustache. Dick Way plays one of the heavies. And, you know, it's all leading to this big final fight sequence, really. And it's really the showcase of the movie, which is just unbelievable um it's this 10 minute balls to the wall fight scene with michelle and, C and cynthia and uh john sham and, and mang hoy like they're all getting involved and it's just jaw dropping some of the stuff that they're doing and there's one i had just one stunt if i could pick one stunt to highlight in the film because you can see that michelle yo is doing this herself she jumps up onto this balcony that has a glass kind of um kind of uh, barrier underneath it and she backflips underneath it. Her head goes through the glass. She grabs the legs of the guys, pulls them backwards, and they fly over the balcony. It's unbelievable. Like, my jaw literally dropped. Um, the stuff that Cynthia's doing, you know, like with the splits and then the scorpion kick. I mean, look at this. Absolutely mental. <laughs> you know, you just don't get that stuff in films anymore that much. It does get done in some countries, but certainly not in the mainstream arena of action films. You just don't see this sort of stuff. And for good reason, you know, you can't really be kicking your lead actors in the face full force, you know, but uh, not that they do it full force, but that there's contact in, in some of these fight sequences. And there's some gnarly bumps from the stuntmen, which, you know, you know, there's only going to be one take on something like that. And, but it just adds so much more of a kind of, uh, a tangible excitement when you you see that these guys are really going at it yeah and that the whole fight scene that final 10 minutes that that took them a month to film and you can tell why that it wasn't a quickly done deal i feel like a, a sequence like that in a marvel movie not to drag marvel because i love them but i feel like that would have taken maybe a week or less to, to film a sequence that big and they just kind of you know use computers to to, <laughs> to kind of finish it later but there's no computers involved in this it's the real deal it's the real shit and it's a funny film too. It's a really funny film. There's some really good physical comedy. And uh, and yeah, so overall, I love the film. And it's set in kind of modern day as well, which I tend to enjoy more than the kind of the Hong Kong period pieces where it's, uh, you know, they feel a bit dry to me. Some of the older kind of Jackie Chan films set in, you know, hundreds of years ago. I don't kind of connect to those as much. But stuff like Police Story, you know, that's when I really get geared up. I don't know, I just enjoy the, the, the contemporary Hong Kong setting a lot. And uh, and it's a, it's a very, I don't know, it's a very um, photogenic city, I guess. I don't know, there's something about it. When I think about films like, uh, like Hard Boiled, for example, um, I just, yeah, I just really enjoy seeing Hong Kong in the 1980s kind of preserved in, in films like this. And the transfer of the film, you know, comes from a 2K restoration. I think it looks great. I think that ugh, I feel spoiled to get movies like this looking this good on home video. Um, you know, people keep saying physical media is dying. And I just think stuff like this is proof to the contrary. And I just, uh, I'm really um, grateful again and happy that we get films that I would have never seen before looking this good and uh you know in some cases you kind of see a wire here or there and some of the imperfections come out in the clearer crisp transfers but there's a charm to those practical effects that you might see the seams around the edges too and uh yeah i thought this film looked great on blu-ray but yeah yes madam i i loved it i really did and there's again there's it's so much i could talk about there's um there's there's a sting from the halloween soundtrack that they just stole i guess without permission uh, which is kind of obvious um, as you're kind of going through the film. Um, the title of the film itself, I mean, it, Yes, Madam is the kind of accepted title of the film, but it's also known as Police Assassins 2. Uh, it's also known as In the Line of Duty 2, Super Cops, and is technically In the Line of Duty 1. And the next one is Royal Warriors. I, can't, I can never pronounce that, that 
name very well royal War royal warriors there we go um which i will be reviewing very shortly on the channel but this is the second film in the kind of in the line of duty series but um yes madam is also known as in the line of duty 2 i think it's one of those things where it gets released after the fact and then it gets released internationally and they i don't know it all gets mixed mixed up and all that kind of thing but yeah um I, I don't want to say too much more about it than that. It's really well shot. Like, it's really well shot. I love the style of, like, where they place the camera. That's another thing that makes the fight scenes stand out so well. And I'm coming to realize now that it's not just Jackie Chan films. A lot of these guys are working together. They're, they're similar crews, similar sensibilities in terms of how these films are put together. And so these camera angles uh, are really accentuating the physical form of what's going on with these characters in the fight scenes and otherwise. And so I think that's another great strength of this film. And I just, um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. So let's get into some of the extras. Um, as I said before, two audio commentaries. So we'll talk about the first one, which is with uh, Asian film experts, Frank Jang and Michael Worth. I really enjoyed this one. I feel like um, Michael Worth was kind of along for the ride because Frank Jang is like, and I think I mentioned it in a previous video, like I was wondering what was the hype behind this Frank Jang guy because he's on everything. Any Hong Kong movie release from any company, he's on there doing a commentary. I thought he must be worth the price of admission because he's constantly getting booked on these things. And I can see exactly why. This guy comes prepared. Um, anyone in the background, he knows who that actor is, how many films they made, when they were born, when they died. It got to the point where Michael Worth said at one point, um, you know, tell me the life story of that person in the background there, third from the left. And Frank was almost like, oh, <laughs> as if he took it seriously. And Michael's like, no, I'm just taking the piss out of the fact that you know everything for everyone. But he said this in a good way, you know. And, you know, Frank is motor mouth. He's, he's got so much information he's pumping into these commentaries. So if you're going to, like, listen to it and kind of try and get some research, you, you need a pen and paper and the pause button because he just rattles off so much. But I love the passion and the enthusiasm and Michael Worth kind of, it, it, it's nice to have someone else there, I think, to bounce off of. And uh, and there were some really interesting tidbits. And, you know, little things that I, I've already forgotten, you know, like what a certain actor did and how long their career was. But it's, I like that stuff. It's, it's fun information for me to hear, nice trivia. And he obviously has a knowledge of Hong Kong as well. They're talking about the airport and the airport sequence of the film and um, how it's changed over the, over the years and things. So you get other kind of contextual information about the city and the Hong Kong film industry at the time, um, which is even more prevalent in the second commentary from action cinema experts, Mike Leader and Anna Venema. Uh, these two have a good rapport. You can tell that they're friends and kind of work together a lot and obviously do a lot of these commentaries as well. Um, but they give a lot more context to Hong Kong. Um, almost to the point where you get Mike Leader kind of dropping names you know, like they're hot, literally. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, I was hanging out with Sammo Hung. And, you know, <laughs> he's definitely, like, you know, being around and, and lived in Hong Kong for a very long time. And But he adds a lot of the context of, you know, certain streets that you see in the movie and, um, you know, the way things were done in films then versus now. And uh, there's even an interesting story I thought about the, the San Miguel beer. I think that was the brand. And an ad campaign that was run in Hong Kong that kind of tanked the, the sales um, and it was something to do about like the, the advert was like, you know, San Miguel's for everyone. And and at the time, people in Hong Kong were like, well, I thought it was more of an exclusive beer. So they thought, well, if it's just a, an average common every day, every man kind of beer, then people stop buying it. That was interesting. It has nothing to do with the film itself, but it's, you know, I like those little details that are kind of adjacent to the film. And I am interested in Hong Kong. So I thought that that stuff was really interesting too. But they talk a lot about, you know, what's going on on screen at the same time and, I really enjoyed both audio commentaries. They both gave me something different and there wasn't really that much overlapping information either. And it just, yeah, because there's, there's stuff that you can't find on the internet, you know, but these guys, they, they've been there, they've experienced it or they've read books or they know people who know these stories and they're really invaluable sources of um, supplementary material for films like this. And I just loved both of them. So I'm actually looking forward to any future ones. And I even started looking at uh, previous Hong Kong releases, Hong Kong film releases on Blu-ray from Eureka. And it was nice to see that a lot of these guys are popping up on a lot of them. And it makes me want to go back and buy some of the older ones as well. And I love the kind of running gag in the the Frank Jang commentary where he's talking about 
you know, da 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 da, and then this guy also appeared in this film, also available from Eureka, <laughs> and it just kept coming up over and over again because so many of the films that he is referencing and cross referencing have been released by Eureka. There is a brand new scene scene select commentary with actress and martial arts movie icon Cynthia Rothrock. So there's about twelve minutes from the film with her doing commentary with Frank Jang. And that was really good to kind of get her thoughts on some of the fight scenes that she did, along with a fully fledged, um, newly filmed 20 minute interview with Cynthia, where she talks about kind of how she got into making films and stuff and why she stopped making films in Hong Kong and her experiences working with Yes Madam, working on Yes Madam uh, with Michelle Yeoh and so on and so forth. So that was a really uh, invaluable um I keep saying that word now, but it really is. I think that what they've done with this overall package is fantastic. And it's great to kind of get her thoughts of, you know, from now, retrospectively, on the film and her career. And they also got a brand new interview with um, actor and action director Mang Hoi, who plays, as I said, Aspirin in the film. And his was an interesting interview because at the beginning he's kind of quite timid, I felt. I don't know if that's just the language barrier, but he would seem to answer questions very, like, very simply and slowly. And, you know, not really expanding upon much. And it felt like as the interview went on, he loosened up a bit and kind of gave more elaborate answers and stuff. So that was good to get kind of an interview with him. And then there is an archival interview with Michelle Yeoh. This is probably my favorite of the kind of, you know, extras on the, you know, taking the commentaries off the table. About a 15 minute interview and she seems a fair bit older than she was in these movies and a fair bit younger than she is now. So I deduce from that that it's probably around the 2000s, early 2000s that this interview took place. And it's a 15 minute interview and she kind of goes over her whole career, talks about how she couldn't really read Chinese actually. And so when she went to Hollywood to make movies, she was relieved that she could actually read the scripts that she was going to be, you know, um, you know, the film she was going to be starring in. And so again, learning that she's Malaysian, never knew that before that she wanted to be a dancer, was injured, and then kind of got into movies through uh, Hong Kong cinema. That was, yeah, a really great addition to this release. There is uh, a few trailers, which are always, you know, fun to watch and see how these films are marketed and so on. And then an archival feature, I don't know where this is from. It's called Battling Babes. And it's, uh, at first when, it's, when it opened, I was like, okay, where's this going? <laughs> it's just like, but it's, it's kind of just a little spotlight on various women who've worked, I'm assuming, in the Hong Kong film industry, like Cynthia Rothrock, uh, Moon Lee pops up, and then other actresses from Japan who I'd never really seen before, uh, an, an American um, stunt woman as well who did the stunts on Buffy, I think. It was interesting, actually. I quite like their perspective, but it's very, very kind of short and sweet and kind of rattles through some kind of talking heads very, very quickly. Uh, and then, of course, we have the, the booklet of the film. And that has a nice essay in it. I'll just get the book out now so I can credit the guy's name. I really enjoyed this one because it doesn't really, it doesn't praise the film outright. So it's called Fighting Like a Girl, Mangling Misogyny and Yes Madam by James Oliver. So yeah, he gives the film its due, but he also talks about how, again, like I was saying, you know, it's this, oh, it's almost presented as, as this kind of breakthrough feminist film, like these two women at the front, but they're, they're really not the lead characters and they don't have much depth to them either. Um, but I think that it's still, you know, the trade-off is, I wouldn't say fair, but there is a, a decent trade-off in the fact that they, they're they presented so strongly in the film and they really are the the kind of toughest, meanest, baddest fighters in the whole movie, you know, and I, I just loved seeing them separate off in the final fight and Michelle Yeoh just being all playful and kind of like goading the guy into fighting and then Cynthia going off against Dick Way, you know, it's just awesome stuff. I just, yeah. Fucking loved this film so much. This is one I'll go back to again and again and again. And just the fact that there's a great, you know, amount of extras. And like, I could almost even see myself listening to the commentaries again. I enjoyed it that much. So you get this nice slip cover on the front. Um, and they've kind of done matching artwork styles for all four of the In the Line of Duty films. Uh, you even get to see Cynthia's Scorpion Kick on the front there, which is kind of cool. But on the, the inside... Uh, you get the same artwork if you so wish to display it, or they have some original um, artwork there from, I guess it would be the, the Hong Kong poster, which is kind of like, uh, you know, cheesy and kind of like basic, but I kind of enjoy it at the same time. So I think I will flip that round to the cover just to have a difference. I always like it when I have a, a slip cover that has like original artwork, and then you I flip it over to the original poster artwork on the the actual case itself 
But it does actually show that she's front and center there on the front, Michelle Yeoh. And you get uh, Mang Hoi and John Sham in the left there. Uh, even though and Panadol is, is not present. But yeah, I, 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 Choi Hark. Choi Hark was such an interesting um, a discovery for me. And I know that he hasn't really done a lot of performances or at least performances of this scale and size as far as I'm aware in movies. I almost want to see more of him in that capacity, you know. He's just, you know, he's he's as good of, of an actor as he is a director, I think. There's, it's, there's a lot of flair. That's what I would categorize it as, both in terms of his directing style and his acting style. Like, you, you, you see it and you notice it on screen. He does not blend into the background, and his films don't kind of feel flat you know it's 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 full of character and uh and i think there is kind of a link there and i just i don't know he was the one guy i was drawn to throughout the film i feel like he could very easily toe that line of being really entertaining and fun and being really annoying and i think he kind of skips quite quite far over the line of being really entertaining and, and missing that point where it becomes annoying so that's one, one more thing I want to kind of check and kind of um, give credit to. Now, not only that, not only all of that stuff, not, not stuff, <laughs> I'll leave that in for free as well. Not only all of that stuff, but we also, you know, two commentaries, you know, brand new interviews, a new commentary on a specific scenes with Cynthia Rothrock and archival interview with Michelle Yeoh, trailers. Um, but you also get um, a separate cut of the film, the export cuts. Now, I have no idea. I wish they'd had a feature on the Blu-ray that kind of um, that explains it, like what's going on, what's the deal with that, because the export cut is slightly shorter. Well, I think it might be a little bit longer than the theatrical cut, um, but there's a whole different opening sequence that is not connected to the film in any way, shape, or form, and actually is a scene from the film Where's Officer Tuba, which actually came out the year after this, <laughs> so, and it's a it's a it's a you know it's a pretty jaw dropping opening sequence, and you're looking at the stuntmen crashing through this car, and it's like holy shit, and then the film starts, but th there's no connection to anything else in the film, and I, I didn't sit down and watch the whole thing and take notes of what was different, but I'm assuming a few scenes were trimmed, and then that opening sequence was added on. I don't know why. Um, I flipped through the final fight. There was nothing really different about that, but. For people who are like enthusiasts of this film, maybe there's like a connection there. And there is actually a different um, a dub. So you, you do get a, a different English dub. So in the actual, um, the main presentation of the theatrical version of the film, um, it is a 2K restoration, the original theatrical cut. And there's a, also a brand new 2K restoration of the international export cut. But I did, ha I listened and did a little bit of a test on the, the English dub. And I'm gonna I put a comparison together for you, just a little a scene that I really enjoyed with Choi Hark's Panadol character. And you can hear the differences in the performance there uh, between the the original theatrical English dub, I suppose. Um, because there's the there's an optional theatrical and home video mixes. And the original classic English mono. So I don't know that's on the export cut. They call it the classic English. So I don't I don't know all the details here and You'd have to look into it if it really, you know, you, it, it was a, a make or break situation for you. But I think they've, in, in that way, catered to pretty much everyone who might have experienced this film on like a bootleg video or DVD or an official release that has a specific English dub that they're attached to. I think that everything is present there. But there is two differences there, and I'll just run a quick clip for you now to show you the, the, the differences between the two um, uh, dubs. So we have this sequence here with Troy Hark and Michelle Yeoh. She's interrogating him and trying to find out um, if he knows the two other men that he's working with. And uh, I, I love Troy Hark in this scene and in this film in general, I guess. I just love his, he's just such a fun character. But in the theatrical cuts English dub, um, it's good. I, I like the, the guy who's doing the dub. But in the export version, there's just a bit more verve there, more of a character. Like it's a bit nasally and whiny and like, it kind of suits the the character that Troy Hark is playing, I think, a little bit more. But I'll let you kind of be the judge of that, as I said. And I'll run the clips so you can kind of get uh, just an idea of kind of... It's interesting to me because, you know, it's not something I really dip my toes in at all. I always watch things subtitled with the exception of a handful of Studio Ghibli films that I like the English dubs of. Otherwise, I stay well clear of English dubs. It's kind of an interesting, you know, um, art form in a way and how, you know, just thinking about how difficult it must be to kind of do a good one. And there have been many bad ones that we, a lot of us know about. And a lot of people who are big fans of these Hong Kong films have probably suffered through 
in the the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s but i think that including these dubs on these releases is going to be really nostalgic for people like that for me it's not really something i'm going to really actually sit down and watch but i just thought i'd be interested to be it'll be kind of fun to look at a scene and check out the two different dubs and see if there's any kind of discernible difference and i found that there was so anyway here we go uh there was a guy who had very untidy hair i think and the second guy he was six foot seven tall at least oh so you mean there were two of them uh, <laughs> what have i just said no i mean that one of them had a nose down here and the other one had slitty eyes like this uh, yes, one of them has a, a very elegant hairstyle. The other one is very, very tall, like a giraffe. Oh, so there were two men. Oh, shit. Uh, no, uh, no, no, I said uh, one of them has a big red nose and the other has little slanty eyes like this. So I think that's that about covers it. Um, I, I could ramble on about this film. There's just so many great scenes, so many great moments, and it's opened my eyes now to Cynthia Rothrock. Um, to Troy Hark, I suppose, but I know that he didn't really go on to do a lot more you know, roles like this, I suppose. Mang Hoy, I'd be interested to see more of him in other films. Dick Way, you know, I like kind of getting to know some of these kind of familiar, familiar faces now. And of course, Michelle Yeoh, who, you know, I've known for decades, but haven't really seen much of. So for me, Yes, Madam was an absolute slam dunk of a release. I'm so happy that I got to kind of dive into it and uh, not so happy about the fact that my camera won't focus on it in any way shape or form what's going on there come on the film's out of focus there we go so yeah you've already seen this slip cover way too many times because i'm just showing it off but there we go that's yes madam i um, hope you enjoyed my review of it i would highly recommend checking it out and i look forward to very shortly coming back to you with my thoughts on uh the sequel which came out the next year i think they, they went right into production on this uh, in 1986 with Royal Warriors and I should say also not to discredit or uh, not give a name check to the director of this film who is uh, Corey Ewan so I th believe that Mang Hoi worked on this film as the action director as well I'm, I might be wrong on that but Mang Hoi as well as playing um, uh, Aspirin in the film he also is uh, an action director and choreographer as well as well as a very good um, actor and you know fighter on film i suppose i'll leave it there thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one